So hello guys from Portland. You made it to the second video, uh, this one of Alaska Airlines slash Virgin America. I'm going back to LA and then up to San Francisco, first on Alaska, then on Virgin. Uh, so I'm super excited to see what this is like. I've n actually never flown Alaska Airlines before, so this should be a lot of fun. Uh, come with me if you want to see what it's like, and of course, how it compares to JetBlue and Southwest. This video was made possible by my incredible patrons. Economy Week wouldn't have been possible without you. The first flight was operated by quite a new 737-900. As you can see, the cabin is quite neutral, but overall it looks super modern. What I found funny about Alaska Airlines is that the flight attendants are very underdressed by at least industry conventions. They were wearing t-shirts and very casual clothing, which I actually thought was quite nice. It made the environment very friendly and inviting. So what really surprised me when I got on was how incredible the amount of legroom was. It was almost on the level of JetBlue, and really, regardless of how tall you are, you will fit here. However, you're going to want to watch out for the middle seat since part of the legroom is blocked by an entertainment system. Another great thing, which is not so common domestically still, is that every seat here had power ports and USB charging. Looking over the menu on board, there are quite a few options, especially for longer flights. I ended up getting one of the snack boxes, as you'll see later in the video. Again, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my patrons for making this happen, and a special thanks to Chris Craig. Paul, Andre, Frederick, and Lila. Thank you so much, guys. So while Alaska doesn't have a seatback entertainment system, they do have onboard Wi-Fi and hundreds of movies and TV shows that you can stream. Overall, I found the selection to be excellent. The one problem was that the Wi-Fi was terribly slow. For much of the flight, I couldn't even reach the login page to access the Wi-Fi. Now I don't know if watching the movies would be that slow, I really hope it wouldn't be. But overall, you're going to want to be cautious if you're going to count on Alaska Airlines Wi-Fi. As I mentioned, I ended up ordering the Mediterranean Tapas snack box for $6. The box was bigger, tastier, and cheaper than on JetBlue. Honestly, I loved this snack and would happily have it again. Since I'm elite on Alaska through a status match, I also got a chocolate. They give this to all their elite members, and I love those small touches. However, the seat felt harder than on JetBlue, and the recline was almost non-existent, so I'd definitely be careful about doing red eyes on these aircraft. One thing I want to mention about Alaska is how fantastic their customer service is. Just like JetBlue, they have a dedicated Twitter team that really gets a lot of freedom and they usually crack some jokes or make an effort to be friendly with customers, which I really appreciate. Every time I've called their call center, I've had fantastic service and it's definitely not paralleled by the US legacy carriers.
Once I got to LA, I had a one hour layover until my 11.30 p.m. connection to San Francisco. When we got on board, the flight attendants gave a nice greeting, and the one thing I love about Virgin America is the mood lighting. Together with the boarding music, it adds to this really cool nightclub sort of vibe. The cabin also has beautiful sleek white seats, which add to the ambiance. And while the legroom was also better than the legacy carriers, it was the worst of my flights so far. It's good to know that the seats have power ports too, available right under the seating area. So there are two um, per row or two per three seats. The entertainment system on Virgin America is also really cool as you can order drinks and foods right through the system. However, there's something about Virgin America that I don't quite like as much as Alaska or JetBlue. I really hope that Alaska manages to incorporate the friendly, welcoming atmosphere that they have on board once they fully integrate Virgin America into their brand. Since it was a late night flight, almost everyone was sleeping, but I decided to get a glass of juice and honestly, I almost slept the whole way too. Virgin America has my favorite safety video in the world. If you haven't seen it already, make sure you head over. I'll put the link in the description because it's so much fun. I want to let you guys know that I'm going to do my first ever virtual viewer meetup on an app called Pocket Peeps. The company reached out to me and asked me to check the app out, so I did and I really loved it. I think it will be a fun place for us to interact, talk about airplanes and our favorite airlines. So I'm going to schedule on the 26th of December at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time or 6 p.m. Central European Time. We're going to meet on Pocket Peeps and chat. So if you want to check the app out, you can do so in the description of this video. I can't wait to meet some of you there. Overall, I had great flights with Alaska Virgin America, especially my first flight on the 737-900. I definitely wouldn't hesitate to fly Alaska again, and regardless of the results, with JetBlue, just as I said last time, or how Southwest were, I wouldn't hesitate to fly Alaska again. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment below what you thought. If you like Economy Week and want to support future productions, please head over to my Patreon, check it out, and see if there's any way you can contribute. I really, really appreciate it. And every dollar goes straight toward recording future Economy Weeks. Welcome to San Francisco. For everyone's safety, please stay seated with your seatbelt fast until the seatbelt sign is turned on. Thanks again for watching and until I see you all next time, fly safe.